So this study was using a replication competent herpes simplex virus which is genetically modified. It's genetically modified in a number of very important ways which makes it a cancer selective virus which has the potential to activate the immune system. So effectively it's an, what's called an oncolytic immunotherapy. So the herpes virus was isolated from a clinical isolate from a cold sore. It was genetically engineered by deleting um, the ICP 34.5 gene, two copies of the ICP 34.5 gene from the virus and replacing that with a cassette in which the human granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor was driven by a CMV promoter. In addition, the ICP-47 gene is deleted from the virus, and that has the role of robbing the virus of the ability to be um, uh, invisible to the immune system. So normally ICP-47 inhibits antigen presen presentation in infected cells. So by deleting that gene, antigen presentation proceeds and the virus then becomes visible. There's right. an additional benefit, one other benefit from that ICP-47 deletion, in that it unleashes the activity of an earlier promoter that drives replication of the virus more actively. So we have a virus that grows in cancer cells selectively, but makes human GMCSF as a potent immunostimulatory protein. The study randomized patients with um, stage 3B through to stage 4 melanoma, unresectable disease. Patients were randomized in a two to one basis to TVEC, or to subcutaneous GMCSF. The TVEC was administered as an intratumoral injection, initially at a low dose of 10 to the 6 so-called um, plaque forming units, and then escalating at the second dose to 10 to the 8 PFU per mil, maximum dose of 4 mils of injectate into deposits of melanoma. The control arm received subcutaneous GMCSF 14 days out of a 28 day cycle. There are data to show that GMCSF um, has some activity in this disease and certainly in discussion when planning this study, which was in the era before the emergence of some of the more novel immunotherapeutics such as anti-CTLA-4 and anti-PD-1 blockade, um, this was a discussion that took place with the FDA and this was encouraged as being a, an, a reasonable choice of control arm in this study. The study shows that the primary endpoint, and I'll need to explain what the primary endpoint was, the primary endpoint was a, an event called disease, um, durable response rate. Durable response rate was a response that evolved at any time during the first year of therapy and which lasted for six continuous months. The patients were allowed to show progression before then going on to achieve response because we know that often patients receiving immunotherapies will show that pattern. But once the patient began to respond, in order to be called a durable responder, they had to stay in response for at least six months. So that was the primary endpoint of the study. The primary endpoint of the study showed that there was a very significant difference between the GMCSF control arm and the TVEC active therapy arm such that the, uh, the odds ratio for that was nearly nine. Of the response by definition had to be at least six months. Um, the relative rates were around 17% versus 2%. The overall response rates between the two arms were around 26% in the TVEC arm versus about 6% in the GMCSF arm. So these responses, and it's important to stress this, these were assessed by an independent review committee that reviewed radiology and photography and clinical data. And this was the entirety of the patient's disease, not just the injected lesions. That's difficult to talk about in terms of progression-free survival because, of course, we know a number of these patients will show an interval progression and then will subsequently respond. So this is why this durable response rate primary endpoint was used in preference to progression-free survival to take account of this and to allow us to capture the patients who were showing a response. What we do know is those patients who did respond to the TVEC therapy frequently had very durable responses to that treatment. The data clearly demonstrate that injection of TVEC into melanoma deposits 
yields response of those injected deposits. So we know from the analysis that about two thirds of injected lesions will show a response and a significant number of those responses will be complete remissions of the individual lesions. We also know that about a third of uninjected lesions will also show a response. And that's indicative of a systemic immune response being generated in situ in the injected lesions. Furthermore, about 15% of uninjected visceral lesions showed a response to the TVEC, again indicative of a systemic immune response. So what I would say to clinicians is that this looks like a very interesting treatment paradigm for melanoma. The notion that you can deliver local injections into deposits of disease, yielding both local responses, but actually more importantly, triggering systemic anti-melanoma responses throughout the body. This is really something that we need to work out. The, the data for, for TVEX suggests that the most appropriate use of this agent might be relatively early in the course of the disease when the patient has in transit disease or nodal relapse or subcutaneous metastatic disease, in which case the agent appears particularly effective. There is also a drive towards assessing this agent in combination with checkpoint blockade because clearly the notion that we could drive local melanoma cytotoxicity with the virus, releasing in potently immunostimulatory cytokines such as GMCSF, releasing tumor-associated antigens into that inflammatory microenvironment, and at the same time use either anti-CTLA-4 or anti-PD-1, anti-PDL-1 blockade to essentially take the brakes off the immune system looks like a very, very nice mechanism of combination therapy. And certainly that is a direction of travel for future research. I think melanoma is absolutely uh, the classical example now of a disease that has gone from being something that we regarded very nihilistically as something that we almost couldn't treat or very rarely would see a response to a disease now where many of our patients can realistically expect good responses to treatment and indeed in those patients who achieve very good responses we're really seeing a tail on the curve such that some of these patients we can begin to think are cured of their disease. This is a completely novel sort of therapy, so-called oncolytic immunotherapy. It's a sort of therapy that is designed to deliver local therapy by local injection, but a systemic outcome by activating systemic immune responses.